Hi, and welcome back to today's outdoor creation experience. Today we're going to be looking at some of the common birds that may be attracted to your backyard feeder. Observational skills are very important when it comes to identifying birds. Here are some tips to help you pay attention to the details that matter most. Number one is the shape and group of the bird. If you take a look at a bird guide, you can actually see how these groups are laid out. We have herons, swans and geese, ducks, hawks, falcons, grouse, shorebirds like sandpipers, gulls, terns, pigeons, owls, flycatchers, swallows, thrushes, wood warblers, and then at the end are sparrows and finches. The next tip for you is size. And this can be a tricky thing to figure out when you're not sure what size reference to use. Saying the bird's about the size of that branch isn't really helpful when it's up in a tree. So today we're going to be using the same bird feeder and also using our most common bird as a size reference. The next clue is behavior. Is the bird eating off the ground? Is it perching up in a tree? Is it soaring high above you in the sky? Or is it hiding down low? Maybe in a shrub or a bush? Or maybe the bird's even swimming in a lake or a river? All of these things will give you clues as to the group and identity of the bird. Today, we're only comparing birds at our feeder. The next clue is the habitat. Where does the bird live? Does it live in a desert? A pie on a mountain? Maybe deep in a forest? Along the edge of a river? In a wetland? These will also give you clues as to the group or type of bird that you're looking at. Today, we're only looking at birds in our backyard, which is surrounded by a bit of forest and next to a golf course. The next one you might not think of right away, but it's season. This is really important because while some birds live here year round, other birds only migrate or fly back to live here during the summer. So this will really help narrow down your search. It's also important to keep in mind that some birds actually change the color of their feathers during certain seasons of the year. So that could make it easier or trickier for you to make your ID. Once you've considered these first clues, then you can look at the field marks of the bird, which are the colors and patterns on each bird's feathers that make them unique from one species to the next. And last, the actual voice of the bird. I hear a bird, and with practice, you can get to know the bird by the sound that it makes without even seeing it. This is especially helpful in the summer once all the leaves come out and you can't really see what type of bird that is up amongst the branches. All right, training is complete. Now that you know how to identify birds, let's take a closer look at what we find at our bird feeder. Our recommended educational resource for the day is an app that you can download for your phone for free called Merlin Bird ID. This is a great option if you don't have a bird guide at home and it also plays the bird sounds to you and can even identify a bird for you by a picture that you upload. Another great feature in this is that it actually walks you through the various steps of identifying a bird that we talked about today. So if you only saw two colors, you put the colors in. If you notice what size the bird is, you put that in. And if you even notice maybe what habitat it was in or whether it was perching or soaring in the sky, you put all those details in and it'll give you a list of about five or six birds that it recommends you take a look at to compare. The Cornell Lab also has some other great educational resources for families and teachers to check out on their website. I'll attach the link in the video description below. An easy way to remember all the tips that you just learned is summarized in the six S's of bird identification. The first stands for shape or silhouette. The second S is for size. The third S is for surroundings, which include the behavior and habitat. So what are they doing and where are they? The fourth S is for season. The fifth is for shade, which include the colors and patterns that make each bird unique. And the last S is for sound, or voice of the bird. These six S's are the clues you will need to consider 
as you solve the mystery of what bird you are watching. So that is all the time we have for birds today. I want to challenge you over this next week to notice what birds are around your yard at home. While you're spending time outside meeting the birds in your neighborhood, you can even bring a nature journal or a piece of paper to write or draw your bird observations. After that, you can test out the Merlin Bird ID app to help you confirm the bird species that you observed. Then, as an extra nature challenge, figure out how many different birds you hear and try to identify at least one bird by sound with your eyes closed, listening only. Give that a try. If you want extra virtual practice, you can watch part two of this video series by subscribing to the Fair Glen YouTube channel. Or you can install your own bird feeder at home or at school to have the birds come right to you. Thanks for joining me on this Fair Glen outdoor creation experience. I hope these videos allow you to get to know your feathered friends a little bit better. Stay tuned for parts two and three of this video series coming soon to Fair Glen's YouTube channel. This video was produced in partnership with Ryan Lamaru Visual Arts. You can find more information about Fairglands Day programs at discoveroce.com. I look forward to teaching you in our 130-acre outdoor classroom.